I'm Kimberly from Fat Quarter Shop, and I'm so excited to show you our newest foundation paper pad. It's called Vintage Sunburst, and it's designed by Lori Holt. Now this one's super unique because we do have the 12 inch size, but the smaller size this time is eight inches. You're gonna love this paper, so let me tell you about it. When you look at the paper pad, you're gonna see that each page has one quadrant of the block. So you need four pages to make one block. So each pad will make 10 total blocks and you'll have two extra pages left over in case you make a mistake. Now you can have a lot of fun with this block. You can use scraps. If you use scraps, you can use a total of 28 different fabrics or you could make it just two colors. You have lots of options with this. And I'm gonna show you today tips on working with the paper and you're gonna actually be able to make a vintage block and it's gonna be so accurate. This is something you couldn't do without foundation paper. So let's get started. So your first step in the process is to take one page out of the pad. Then you're gonna flip to the inside cover and you're gonna cut three lights for placement one, three darks for placement two, three lights for placement three, and then one square for placement four. Now we're doing this quadrant scrappy. So this is how this looks. And then from here, you're gonna cut your fabric four on the diagonal once. So those are the fabrics we're gonna be using. And you'll see that when we do this, we're gonna match our fabrics as we go. Then you're gonna take one quadrant, you're gonna cut on the dotted line, and you're gonna see this is section one, section two, section three. You're gonna piece all of these the same exact way, the same technique. I'm gonna start with section one and show you how to do that. So for quadrant one, I'm gonna take two matching backgrounds. I've got my white, that's gonna be number one, and I've got my second white that's gonna be number three. And then you'll pick one of your scrappy fabrics to be number two. And that's gonna be for one quadrant. What I like to do is take the add a quarter ruler, and I like the pink one because it has a sharp paper edge. And you're gonna make a crease between the one and the two, and a crease between the two and the three. And these techniques I use on all foundation papers, so you could use this on any of our other papers. Then what you're gonna to wanna to do is on the wrong side, place your fabric one right here, and I wanna go about a quarter of an inch up from that so that I have a quarter inch seam. So I'm gonna use some sew line glue and put that there so you can see how that looks. Face up, wrong side. Then I'm gonna take my fabric two and I'm gonna put this right here and just when you fold it back, you wanna make sure it's gonna all the way cover through your next crease. And then what I'm going to do is put a pin just really carefully so that that stays right sides together. Flip this over and I'm gonna use a size 90 needle. So using a size 90 needle will give you better results because the needle is thicker and it's gonna go through the fabric easier. I'm going to go to my sewing machine. I'm gonna shorten my stitch length to like a 1.2 to 1.3 and I'm actually gonna go all the way across the paper. I want you to sew a little bit off of these edges It'll just make it easier on the next um, step when we're pulling paper. So like I said, start off of the paper and then now that I have this under my sewing machine bed, I'm gonna remove that pin that just kept it in place. So from here, I'm going to flip the darker color up and I'm gonna use the quick press tool and by Lori Holt, and I'm just gonna press this down. Instead of using the iron, it just makes it go a lot quicker. Then I'm gonna turn that over, and where I have the crease between the two and the three, fold that back. Use the add a quarter ruler. If you go just like this, it's going to hit, and so it gives you a perfect quarter inch seam right there, and trim. Turn this back over, and then you've got this piece, which is piece number three, and you're gonna put it this way where the long side is here so that when you flip that over, it goes all the way across. So then I'm gonna use uh, two pins or one pin just to keep it in place so it doesn't shift. Go to my sewing machine, remove the pin and stitch all the way across going off of the paper. Now I'm gonna flip this over and do the same thing. 
and it's nice and flat. And then now we need to trim. So what I'm gonna do here is you're gonna see some lines that say first trim line and final trim line. So I'm first gonna do that first trim line and it is really important to stay right on that line. And then from your final trim line, I'm not gonna trim that. I'm gonna trim a quarter inch away from that so that I have a little bit of room later to work with and that will make sense the further we go along. So this is section one. Now I'm going to move to section two and um, we're going to just kind of fast forward as I go. It's the same technique and um, it's just that section two has a fourth piece, but we'll do the same thing and I'll come back once I have sections one, two, and three done. So this is section two and again I've trimmed right on the first trim line and trimmed a quarter inch away from the final trim line. And there is your section three. So then I'm going to put section three at the bottom, section one on the right, and section two in the center. So now you can see these two seams right here are cut directly on the line. The ones on the outside that are the final trim line are a quarter inch away. So now I'm going to sew these two sections together. You're going to put them right sides together and you're going to see this dot right here. Put your pin through that dot, go to the other side, and put your pin through the second dot back here. So your pin is in both dots. Then you'll remove the pin and just pin in place. And you can do the same thing at the bottom where this intersects at that quarter inch. Put that through and make sure it goes through on that same intersection on the back and then pin. And then over here, you're gonna put your pin in this quarter inch right here at that seam and then go to the back and pin right in that intersection. And so pinning is so important. If you don't pin, the accuracy of the foundation paper is not as good. And then pin throughout. And then I'm gonna go to the sewing machine. I'm gonna start stitching like I always do off the paper. I'm gonna go all the way down and off the paper. And just remove your pins as you go. And just remember this is all bias. So it is going to be something that moves around more than normal. So now I have that sewn together. What I'm gonna do is just finger press that and you can see how this lines up right there. And for better accuracy, I think pressing open right here is very helpful. So I'm gonna just do that with the seam roller on the back and the front. And then right here, you have a little tail. You're gonna just cut that off. And then we're gonna add the next unit and do that same thing. Right sides together and pin, pin, pin. And when you're pinning this one, you just wanna make sure when you poke that pin through right there that it comes out in the center of your seam right there where it's pressed open. And then do that same thing. Press to one side and press open. You can also press with your iron. With this, what I would do is just make sure that you don't use steam before all the paper comes off. So that is your first unit. But what I wanna show you right here is now it says final trim line, final trim line. At this point, you're gonna trim these two. Now, you could have trimmed those earlier. I just prefer to do it at this point. And so you're gonna put your ruler right on that line. And again, the more accurate you are in cutting, the more accurate you will be. So this is one quadrant from one page. Now you'll need to make three more to make the block. So let me show you those. So we've got quadrant one, two, three, and four. And what you can see from this is we did um, all scrappy prints and then these two backgrounds match. You don't have to do that. You could do uh, different backgrounds. You can do whatever you would like. We did the same thing where um, we left that final trim line empty. I am gonna go ahead and press this like these without steam, just so it's nice and flat before I put the block together. And then you're gonna place these two right sides together and these two right sides together. And you're gonna use that same pinning technique throughout. And then you'll sew both seams. And 
and like I said I sew off of the paper and then when you get right here and there's no paper because we've pressed open you'll just eyeball that or use a quarter inch seam or you could just press to one side and you would still see that and with testing this block, I really find that it's best to just use the seam roller and then use the iron at the very end. And so right here, we're gonna do that same pinning and you should see that right here, that little intersection and this little intersection should meet. And when you put it together, it should, but you can just pin just to make sure. And then this is gonna be the last seam in your block. And then when you open that up, that matches perfectly and it looks really good. And you're gonna see that this doesn't match 100% perfect just because we didn't press those seams open. You wouldn't be able to press your seams open to get this block, but I think it looks great. It's meant to look that way. Now you're gonna do that same thing, press to one side, press open, and then I'm going to give the front of the block just a quick press on my iron before we trim the block and remove the paper. Okay, so now you can see the front of the block. And when you look at the back of the block, we've got that final trim line around the edge. And the reason we do that is just, it's just so much easier to trim that at the end to get an accurate result. And it gives a little bit of forgiveness as you're sewing the block. So from here, you can either take a ruler and cut all four sides. But I think it's easier on this to use a rotating mat and a Creative Grids 8 inch square ruler to trim this down. So you can either put this ruler on the front and you see these white lines in the center of the ruler. You just put them right on there and trim. Or you can follow the lines on the back right here. I think the block actually doesn't shift as much from the front side. So I'm actually going to cut from the front side because I find it's easier. And when you do that, just make sure you've got your white lines lined up and you're about a quarter inch away from the edge right there. And cut the other sides. Now you might have to push a little bit more because there is a lot of layers to this. And when you look on the back, you're basically right on that final trim line. You might be a little bit off here, a little bit off here, but it still comes out eight and a half and it looks perfect on the front and we've still got those quarter inch points here. And um, from here, I'm gonna show you how to remove the paper. Now, because we use the size 90 needle, the paper should come off easier and because we used a short stitch length. So I'm gonna show you first, take out all the paper from one quadrant and then you wanna make sure you get all the paper from between the blocks out. So what you can do is from the front, just kind of feel around and make sure you don't have any paper left, but on the front, you'll be able to tell if there's any uh, paper that you forgot to remove. So from here, I'm gonna just do one final press because it does get a little um, wrinkly once you take that paper off. So doing that final press makes it really nice and crisp. So here are the blocks in 12 inch size and eight inch size. If you're doing the 12 inch size, you'll do the same technique. You will just use the cutting sizes on the back side of this cover. So this is your 12 inch and this is your eight inch. They're both designed by Lori Holt. This fabric right here is Hometown by Lori Holt and the fabric on the front cover of these paper pads is B Dots by Lori Holt. So you can see how it looks in two different fabric collections. So from Lori's series of foundation paper with It's so Emma, we have the 12 and 8 inch vintage sunburst, and then we have the 6 inch and 4 inch vintage kite. Now we're probably gonna get questions on why did we not make this in 6 inch, and it just did not work out. It was just too small, it won't come out accurately. She also has Sparkle Star in 12, 6, and 4 inch, and she also has Economy Plus in 12, 6, and four. So now we have lots of vintage blocks you can make with foundation paper and it's so fun. You're going to get accurate blocks and you're going to just love it. If you love making vintage blocks, you're going to love the vintage sunburst blocks. Try it out. Let me know what you think. And if you have any tips, put them in the comment box so everyone can learn from your tips. See you next time.